it's the next level. She does look shocked to meet the realist, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, that's adorable. My thoughts are not available to you, Tuts. They never, ever were. So don't go giving yourself a migraine. We've got work to do. Where are my children? Where are my children? <laughs> Oof. That accent really comes and goes, doesn't it? Where are they? Magic's no good here. Didn't you notice? Basic protection spell? One on each wall? No? Nothing? These are runes, Wanda. In a given space, only the witch that casts the runes can use her magic. Why do you not know the fundamentals? Who are you? Who are you? Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Mark. And I'm Damien. And this week, well, Ben couldn't make it this week, but he will definitely be here for Season 1, Episode 9 of WandaVision. He felt that, well, Damien's here and he could take up some of the role. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're covering WandaVision Season 1, Episode 8, previously on. And the synopsis for this particular episode is Wanda embarks on a troubling journey revisiting her past for insight into her present and future so yeah it's kind of brief kind of simple as far as the synopsis is concerned but there is so much involved within this episode and what were your overall thoughts of the episode damien generally i thought it was good uh certainly the darkest episode we've seen so far uh so that keeps me from calling it my favorite but it was still a good episode yeah. You know, like, aside from Agatha's sarcastic comments, there was really no humor whatsoever in this, which is, like, such a contrast from last week's episode. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were spoofing Modern Family. And, you know, we had no Darcy, no Jimmy Woo. Nope. Uh, we had Jim Vision for a little bit, but he was kind of the early Vision. Uh, you know, didn't really provide too much humor there. So, but all, all that being said, I did like it for what it was. It was, like, a pivotal episode kind of telling us, you know, how did we get here and where are we going? So I, 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 I didn't, I did enjoy it, uh, but it was dark. Ooh, it was dark. Yeah, very, <laughs> very dark. Yeah. I'm sorry to have you come on such a dark episode. Oh, that's all right. No, 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 no. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> but yeah, my overall, I, I just enjoyed the episode just like you. It was, and I do admit, it was kind of dark for a uh, Marvel or MCU TV show as it is, but also gave us a lot of insight of Wanda's past that we have not really been getting much of. Uh, we really didn't know much more of the experiments that Hydra was doing, how she was able to uh, acquire her abilities, and now we know there was an underlining, something underlining uh, like a gene or a mutant gene at that. We'll get into that at a later point, but I was just happy to see more of Agatha within this episode, and we got pretty much a backstory within her herself which is pretty much you know i didn't get the wonderful this is agatha's tv show now like it left off the last one <laughs> right <laughs> which was pretty funny we got that little montage at the end i thought we would get the monsters intro uh monsters intro that uh we were talking about last episode when ben and i and Greg were covering it but you know in all honesty i really don't think agatha is a good therapist in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> no, I would agree with that, yes. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to uh, our top five or highlights of the show. So uh, do you have a number five? Well, because it can't all be sorrow, can it? I've always been alone, so I don't feel the lack. It's all I've ever known. I've never experienced loss because 
I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief? If not love, persevering. Uh, sure. I'm going to say number five. I'm going to start off with the opening scene in Salem, Massachusetts, 1693. Uh, it's kind of the, well, it's the opening scene for the episode. It's the tone setter, really. Uh, it starts off with what I thought was a, a witch burning from the time of the Salem witch trials. Correct, yeah. And once they showed the blue energy binding, I realized, oh, they're all witches. And here it's a coven led by Agatha's mother, who I looked up on IMDb, and she's Evanora Harkness. Do you know her from the comic at all? Yes, there was something briefly in the comics regarding Evan Aura, Evan Aura, I think it is. That's why I said yeah. Yeah, Evan Aura, that's how it's Yeah, me. so, yeah, there was something about that regarding her, and uh, I, honestly, I think, just like you, it, it, it was, to me, it was kind of a reverse of the Salem's Witch, Witch Trials, if you think about it. Yes. If you think about it, it's like the coven is going against her, feeling that she's going into these dark arts, or this dark magic or looking for quote-unquote chaos magic that I think that is what they're hinting at that uh, Wanda has delved into but didn't know it. So, and yeah, and the fact that we get to do see that history of her. And like I said, it, it was like a reverse Salem's Witch Trial because the witches were going against a witch, <laughs> whereas yeah. before they used to just burn them. <laughs> yeah, like I said, that's what I thought we, we were seeing. And, and then, like you said, we get a little bit of Agatha's uh, backstory. You know, like you said, they, they were charging her with uh, with practicing dark magic. They actually said above uh, practicing, uh, stealing knowledge above her age and station. That was the exact words of her mom there, practicing the dark magic. So, And then, of course, we see she's so powerful that she can overpower and kill the entire coven and her mother. Which, again, like I said, this episode, it's the first five minutes. That's how dark this episode was. You know, yeah. it's just a, a mass of, of crumbled witch bodies. And Agatha walks away, you know, smiling like she does. So, um, yeah, we know exactly uh, uh, what we're dealing with there at that point. Yeah. Especially since you do see how manipulative that Agatha is. Because, help me, help me, help me. And then she just reverses mm. it and says, oh, I'm, and then she just absorbs all their powers and abilities. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing in there that was like a little bit of a clue of what we're going to see later on as we continue to talk about this. You saw a blue crown or some sort of headdress on Agatha's mother as she was posting her hex or powers against Agatha. And it kind of reminded me almost similar to, but it was blue, but it reminded me of, of Wanda. You know, with uh, her Scarlet Witch wardrobe and how she has that headdress, uh, similar to the comic. But we do mm -hmm. see something later on regarding that uh, and a premonition and, uh, and a flashback that we get. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I I found that interesting. I really enjoyed that. That was actually, <laughs> I think, my number three, but we'll move on to that. And I have a ton more notes that we'll jump into as we go forward. So that that was your number five, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So my number five, well, the fact that we get to see how Westview came to be and and it was basically all done by Wanda. You know, we, you know, she never took Vision's body to begin with. Hayward basically flat out lied to everybody saying that Wanda took Vision's body, where in a sense, we do get to see her building Vision. And you could see the Mind Stone energy, the color of it, the yellow that created Vision within that world. And on top of that, by doing so, and I'm going to go back and unfortunately, Ben's not here, but. I'd love for him to correct me, and he'll probably correct me next week. When Hayworth was tracking Vision inside of Westview, he was tracking vibranium signatures or patterns. That mm -hmm. means that Wanda is able to make vibranium. Oh, wow. And that is an immense feat in itself. Not only did she create Vision, but she was able to create vibranium and let alone children. So wow. that shows how powerful she is. Within the next, or as a nexus being, and I thought mm -hmm. that was amazing to to see on screen. 
And I'm just curious because uh, at that very ending scene, which we'll get to later on, because we do see another vision come into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he did, if you think about it, Hayworth did imply to Wanda how she could resurrect. It was kind of like a snide remark, but mm-hmm. she took it and she was so upset at that point and runs to her car. And then she sees the uh, the deed to the house and then goes to Westview and you see how you know how terrible it looked <laughs> of all mm-hmm. places this this community was terrible looking in new jersey unfortunately and you see the certain areas you see the movie theater you see herb you see the mailman you see uh vision's boss's wife you see all these people as she passes them in town and they're pretty much the real version of what they're supposed to be and then then we finally get to do see what wanda and how she created it because of her pain just causes that explosion of that power to come through and to create everything that she needs. So that that's my number five. <laughs> mm. Well, I'll go into, uh, I guess, my, my next note, um, which I had a little further on, but I'll just use it now since you mentioned the Westview. That was one of my notes. So um, just, yeah, to follow up when Wanda was driving into town and we got to see modern day Westview. And like you mentioned, all the characters that we see in the TV shows, obviously Wanda spots them. And that's probably when she does the change. That's how she incorporates those people into the television shows because they're the faces that she saw in Westview. So that's how she, I guess, created the chose to make those characters, I suppose. Either that or, you know, the people making the TV show just decided to, <laughs> to point, a, you know, point those faces out to us for our sake right there. But um so we saw, yeah, everybody, the delivery guy, Jones, who's advertising piano lessons, like you said. And the town looked really, I agree with you, the town was really beat up and sad looking. Yeah. Everything was closed <laughs> under construction. The people were like expressionless. And I took it very, I, I worded it very unsitcom like <laughs> because for, you know, all the sitcoms we had up here, everybody was peppy and cheery for the most part. I know we had different characters that, that weren't, but yeah, the town, like, it, it kind of needed a facelift so in a weird way what wanda did was a good thing <laughs> yeah <guess>. right <laughs> um oh and i wanted did you notice the um when she she you know she sent out her energy and it started changing the town mm-hmm. did you see the lago sign on the side of the building yes i did it's uh, yeah well, did we see that earlier because i thought in one of your other podcasts you mentioned yeah, we like, did uh, mention uh, lagos. lagos because uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was something. Yeah, it up. makes cleaning a snap, and I thought. Like, yeah, because oh, Lagos God. was the town. <laughs> yes, yes, that uh, all that happened. Also, within that particular uh, event, as we see, because the movie theater. Yes, was it was uh, what was it closed? No, or? no, no, no. I'll go into it because I have my side notes here that you have not seen. So, so basically, uh. Ten Hauser Gate is on the marquee of the Coronet Movie Theater, which is the movie theater within that particular town, the Coronet Movie Theater. Okay. So it says uh, Ten Hauser Gate, which is something that references to Blade Runner's Roy Batty speech. Oh. Okay. And in the film about, basically, if you remember, Rutger Hauer at the very end gives this speech to Harrison Ford's character, Decker. And basically, it, it states, you know... a. Ba- the speech is about a figure cast as a villain, but just wants to live in peace, just like Wanda, if you think about it. Oh, So okay. that's a little bit of a minor Easter egg. Yeah. And then it changes to Big Red and Kidnapped, which could mean Wanda doing the same thing within that particular town. So she's Big Red, and she's kidnapped all these people within this particular town. So I found it funny because before it said Tannhauser Gate and that was in modern day and then it does the whole shift during the hex and then you see it's it changed to Big Red and Kidnapped. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So I, that, that, I could be reading way too much into things, but <laughs> that's what I got out of it. No, you're very insightful. I've, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed since the very beginning, uh, all your, uh, your notes and insights to everything. And most of the time you're right. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a cool thing too, that we, we didn't mention at the very beginning, the Marvel studios logo going from one is red color, but you. It oh, was more into the Agatha's purple. Yes. Well, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool. I thought. Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. So we're on to number four, right? 
Yeah, I just I did my number four. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> of all things, the therapeutic look at one is bad memories and good memories, if you think about it, the way Agatha brings her through. Not the best of physicians. She's not a licensed therapist or psychologist in any way. <laughs> but mm -hmm. we... We see the night the Stark bomb showed up and killed her parents and how she was brought in by Hydra to be tested on. And we see that she and Pietro were the only living test subjects, as we know, that survived the tests with enhanced outcomes, apparently. And I'm still thinking it. there's a mutant gene underlying under all that because even Agatha is confused as to why she thinks that Wanda's a naturally born witch, like kind of like the, uh, it's like the unicorn out of mm -hmm. anything. It's like, it's, it's a witch's unicorn. It's like, you're, you don't, you shouldn't exist kind of thing, but she does, but she doesn't know how to control them. The, and the same thing that I have in my head is both Wanda and Pietro survived. So I'm thinking it's more genetic and mutation. That was underlying. So she always had these abilities, but they just never came into fruition because she was a child. But when they started to experiment on her with the Mind Stone, it kind of enhanced and created more what was underlying for both of them. Pietro mm -hmm. getting speed and her having more power and enhancing what she has. And Agatha is really ticked off if you think about it because Wanda had no clue about uh certain like symbols that were on the wall that were hindering her from using her abilities and mm -hmm. she goes you don't even know you just do it naturally it takes years to build up this kind of information to become this kind of a witch you just do it subconsciously all the way across town and that shows you how strong that Wanda is but I think part of it is her mutant ability and or enhanced <laughs> they haven't really said mutants yet, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, listeners. So uh, I, I don't <laughs> want you guys screaming at me or Ben. <laughs> but at, at this point, they have not really introduced mutants into the Marvel Universe or cinematic universe at that. So now we're going to be getting hopefully a little bit more information regarding this in later movies. Because how do you explain that both her and Pietro survived and nobody else did? And both came out with big powers. And especially with somebody, and even the scientist said there's something underlying it, which I, I'm thinking it, it's got to be a hint or a nod to that. Yeah, I, I did not give any thought to Pietro and what would ha what was uh, you know what would happen to him in the same circumstances with the same experiment. But you're right. They said oh, when we saw Wanda there, all the other test subjects survived, or didn't survive, rather. She was the only one that had survived to that point. So, yeah, you can only assume that oh, Pietro went through with the test, unless they stopped the testing. Um, yeah, you know, well, Pietro then how do you explain his powers, you know? That's true, yeah. He must have had the same result, must have gotten uh, enhanced as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, hmm. I didn't think that far uh, that far ahead into it. All right. So, yeah, that was my fourth. There's just a little thought. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, number three? So, let's see. I guess talking about Agatha a little bit and her motives. Actually, I just want to start off by saying Catherine Hahn was fantastic in this episode. I mean, she's been good the whole series. Mm -hmm. But this episode where she, she played the part, like, in control and yet with that slight bit of desperation. I just thought she kind of nailed it uh, with the, you know, with the, with the given situation that she was going through there, uh, you know, trying, trying to get something from Wanda, but still showing that, that she's in complete control of at least that situation. E even though Wanda created the hex, she can't uh, get it at Wanda. This is can't get into Agatha's mind. So now we know that Agatha has enough power to twist Wanda's pretend reality in hopes of breaking Wanda's delusion so she can figure out how she had the power to create the Hex. So I'm thinking Agatha is doing all this. Like, what are her motives? She's doing all this, I guess, to, to gain... And you might have said this early on. She wanted to gain the same power, I guess, yeah, as Wanda I, has. I honestly think um, she's trying to suck Wanda's power or get that power for herself to some degree. Meaning that mm -hmm. she is the big bad, for the most part, in this mm -hmm. series right now. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's some sort of underlining power that we've been talking about. I mentioned Mephisto, Nightmare, 
Kang the Conqueror or whoever that might be involved. I'm still on the Mephisto bandwagon or Nightmare bandwagon, but I'm thinking because if we saw Vision start to fall apart coming out of the wall, that one episode, Mm -hmm. he was literally being torn apart because his life stems on the fact of that hex, of that wall, that boundary, that world that they have. Now, do the kids on the same path or the same thing? That's my question. So I'm I'm curious to see how far her power goes or if it's just limited to that area or limited within her own world. And I'm sure Ben would say, well, you know, she could create or re-change the whole world at one point. He mentioned that before. What if it affects the whole world and changes Mm. and creates mutants or or something to that nature, Mm -hmm. which would be interesting. But uh, I'm curious because we only have one more episode and they're saying it's only 50 minutes. And I'm curious how they're going to wrap this up to go right into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, I don't know. There seems I mean, I mean, this is the beginning of phase four. So obviously we have a long road ahead. Actually, (laughs) it's funny. They said that Spider-Man, what, Homecoming or whatever it was, Uh not Homecoming. Far from home. Oh, far from home. Yeah, that far was the beginning. Oh, that was the beginning. They, that they was the beginning said of because it okay. took place after whatever oh, okay. Endgame. Yeah, gotcha. But gotcha. I, was, yeah. you know, us waiting so long for a new phase at this point is <laughs> ridiculous, mm-hmm. yeah. especially since we haven't gotten a Black Widow movie yet. Oh, soon, right? May, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> we can only hope. Now, you already right. spoke about, and I'll go into my three, which I kind of brushed over. We already talked about Agatha's past, her mother. Well, interestingly enough, I, I kind of went deep diving. If you look at the crown that on Agatha's mother, Evanora, which is the name of the Wicked Witch of the East in The Wizard of Oz. Oh. So, but the crown, like I stated, you know, was similar to Wanda's comic version and to elaborate on that, if you look at Wanda's, uh, like the experiments, when the Mind Stone explodes and they didn't see what happened, but you saw it, saw it from Wanda's point of view and you saw an image, I think mm-hmm. that was Wanda looking at herself in the future of being the Scarlet Witch because she has that kind of, that tiara, that, that headdress similar to you know, Agatha's mother, Ivanara. And yeah, and I, yeah, I kind of had that feeling too, when you saw it and it was real quick. I mean, I watched this several times and each time I tried to really pay attention (laughs) to see, you know, if there was any other insight, but you're right. The crown was, was pretty much the, the only distinct part that you could really peg. So yeah, I I could understand that. Yeah. That silhouette was a giveaway of Wanda's future. I think that's just my thought. Yeah, because who else? Who else could it be showing up in the in the Mind Stone there? Yep, the energy. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> You're number two. Uh, we talked a little bit about it. I mean, I might be able to add a little bit to it. Of Wanda's past. Uh, you know, you touched upon a couple things. Um, you know, overall thoughts that this was a how did we get here episode? Well, we find out because well, we talked about Agatha's backstory, and now we're talking about man. We also have Wanda's uh, backstory. We knew a little bit from the movies. Mm -hmm. And actually, this probably just went into a little bit more in depth than those. We see, uh, we see that her, she used powers to stop the bomb from detonating, which, you know, we were led to believe it was defective in the movies. That was what, I guess what she thought all along until, you know, we just lived through in this episode what really had happened. Now, you don't think she had witch powers from birth, though. You think it's more mutant powers. I think it was more mutant powers, more, but I think they're enhanced. And ha- well, that was well, that was when she was a young girl, so I guess it was before the enhancing. Yeah, but, so, yeah I think yeah, afterwards so. they got really enhanced to that point. Right. But in if you look at Wanda as she was talking about that incident, she mm-hmm. had doubts herself. Like, I, that didn't... Ha- I didn't do that. The bomb was just effective. Mm -hmm. So she had doubts at that. And Agatha still thinks that, you know, she's that unicorn for the, uh, for the witches. That's that Mm -hmm. Scarlet Witch. So, Mm -hmm. but you know, that, that's why I always, I always been thinking lately since the episode going, what about Pietro? You know? Yeah, that's, that's in my notes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I have some notes, uh, my, my, my secondary notes. But but. speaking of that whole bomb reference with Stark and you see that, that beeping 
red light. Well, it kind of references and goes back to episode one when they have the, you know, the Stark Master 2000 toast maker oh, toast. and that red light <laughs> was beeping. So that was an underlying. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I forgot. Thought, that. <laughs> you know, that that was something that was in the back of her head, a repressed memory. So she was mm. th- watching that or seeing that commercial and that was the Toastmaster 2000. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so her, uh, you know, the past of, of the, her joyous moments with the family when the the tragedy struck. And, uh, you know, like I said, I watched this a couple of times. Every time I flinched when the bomb went off. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, I, I knew it was coming. Knew it was I knew coming, it was coming. But... And I was like, oh, this is a nice moment, nice moment, but it's coming. Well, yeah, to suspend <laughs> your disbelief, too, because the TV <laughs> was still playing. I know. And she referenced oh that God. whole uh, Walnut episode from the Dick. Van Dyke mm-hmm. show. So I looked further into it. So the Dick Van Dyke show episode was, it may look like a walnut was the name of it, but it's mm-hmm. not the one that they were talking about that they put in on the DVD player. Apparently continuity for particular episodes or seasons do not work. But within that episode, with a little bit of research, I found out that it was more about alien invaders and a re reality rewriting itself similar to what's going on within one vision with the reality rewriting itself and with the alien invaders the only thing i could come up with and think about of what's going on with the scroll invasion that's possibly coming <laughs> hmm. but that's just my thoughts oh, okay so i think was uh that was number two yeah we're we finishing up number two then? yeah okay so that, that yeah that's that's uh, that's all i had for that what about number, number one two? Oh, number one, uh, and we might have the same number one. I'm not sure. It's the, uh, I want to talk about the post credit scene. Well, the, the ending scene is what mine is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, do you want to go first then? Sure. Uh, or do it in, in chronological order? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, order. Well, I there have a go. lot to say too about the, uh, the post credit scene or the mid credit scene. Okay, cool. But yeah, the, uh, the, my number one would just be Agatha pointing out that Wanda is the Scarlet Witch, that ending. And the fact that we get to see Agatha in complete costume and holding on to the kids. And trying to get at Wanda at that point. Now, the one thing that's missing from this particular episode, don't see, <laughs> we don't see Monica. We do not see Pietro. And no, we don't. And I have my thoughts about that because the last time we saw them was in a mid credit scene where uh, Snooper's going to snoop <laughs> and him wearing mm-hmm. some weird, you know, knit hat that, and it doesn't, it, this doesn't really remind me of anything of, the Peter Maximoff that we knew from the Fox series, or let alone the Aaron Taylor Johnson version of Quicksilver and the MCU. To me, I'm starting to think with uh, with Pietro in this, that that rabbit, Scratchy, Mr. Scratchy, mm-hmm. you know, I every witch has a familiar. And I'm thinking that, and I've said it last week, I'm thinking Peter could be, or Pietro could be, this familiar and then she's just utilizing him and that's so why he's so wacky in the way he was with the kids and she was just using her magic to control it because she already mentioned if you look she changed the the bug into a bird and fed it to the bunny mm-hmm. you know she was able to manipulate that she can't do necromancy but she was able to pull something but she was able to change a bug into a bird so what's to stop her from changing a bunny to a person yeah, I thought the yeah, I thought the bunny was was going to be somebody as well, especially with, with also when like when she you said she you know she ended up feeding the throw the lo- locust to it almost feed it there. I don't know. I'm with you. I, I almost thought that the the bunny was actually. I thought when you guys last week or a couple weeks ago, I guess been talking about Mephisto. I actually was wondering if the bunny was Mephisto. <laughs> at well, some point. also but, uh, we don't know who this Ralph character that she keeps talking about. No. No, you're right. We never met. A We've Ralph. never seen or heard of this Ralph guy ever since. So uh, it, it could be Ralph who's the bunny, and it could be Nightmare or Mephisto, or who knows. We don't know. Yeah, but like you but, said, Pietro. So she can. She was able to control Pietro. We know now. It's it, it, she didn't bring him back. You know, from from yeah. the dead because she said, you know, your brother's dead on a con- another continent with full of holes. Mm-hmm. Um, so who is he? Because everyone in town was someone that Wanda, uh, you know, changed. Wanda over had in seen. The hex. Well, yeah. Wanda had seen, but they were already lived in Westview. So correct. 
is he someone who lived in Westview? And then when they casted him, they casted Evan Peters. Is that what I'm saying? Evan Peters. That's who it is, right? Yeah. yeah, it's Evan Peters. Did they Peters cast Evan Peters, Peters. as uh, Pete, um, Evan Peters as like fan service, or or is there something like you mentioned? Is there something else? I think there's something else. That's uh, yeah, going there on has there. to be because it doesn't seem like they would just they would just do that. Yeah, Ben's kind of determined that it's Doctor Strange coming in. He's not here, unfortunately. Yeah, no, but, yeah you know, I heard his theories, and I don't know. I don't think that's Doctor Strange. I don't think so. Well, now no, that we I, saw well, the post credit scene, you know, and we saw what we did in the post credit scene, I don't know if we'll see Doctor Strange next week. I believe we will. Unless, it, unless it's in a post credit scene last week. You think, you think we will? Like, for a better part of the episode, or just maybe at the very, very end? Probably at the yeah, very, very at the end. the very, very end. Yeah, I could see that. And if not, definitely within the post credit scene, right. too. So... Yeah, they're. I don't think Strange is going to be a huge part of it, and the big talk of Bettany during his interviews of his the person he always wanted to act with would be himself because at the very ending, and we're going to go right into this post credit scene or mid credit scene mm-hmm. now. <laughs> we get what uh, listeners I I've been talking about what I talked about last week, White Vision. Mm-hmm. And I talked about this for two episodes. White Vision, the thing that was brought together. Now, obviously, Hayworth lied and they had Vision all along, but he's able to recreate Vision from the drone that they sent in that was from like the 80s or something. And it still had part of Wanda's hex power on it. And that was the energy that they needed to revive this particular Vision that they created. Now, mind you, just like what Ben had stated, this particular Vision is a golem. He's just White has no emotion, no nothing. He's just a pure robot that they can control. So I'm thinking next episode, it's going to start off where it's a battle where Monica is going to wind up having to battle Pietro because he's somebody bad. Wanda and Wanda's vision within Westview is going to have to go against this white vision as well as Agatha. And the (laughs) kids are involved as well. And then at the very end... We probably will get Strange coming in. And then (laughs) there's going to be a lot of payback or whatever it is for S.W.O.R.D. for whatever they were doing. Because after all said and done, unless they fly off into the sunset somewhere. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen with the vision from the Hex? Uh, Like I said, if the Hex is done, then he is done, I think. I think he just falls apart. He, He cannot exist without that particular Hex. Unless Wanda is able to hex him into the white vision, Hmm. that personality, because I'm going to go into comic stuff right now regarding this white vision. In issue number 43 of West Coast Avengers, there is a white vision, and this is when Vision didn't want to, he just wanted no emotional chip, kind of like Data in Star Trek. He didn't want to have all those emotions, didn't want to have that memory of having that life with Wanda or the kids or anything. He wanted to start over and just be a regular robot. And he gets that wish, and he does. He was taken apart and put back together, and he was White Vision, devoid of any personality whatsoever. And then come issue number 45, he comes into play, and he comes back. But I think this is uh, probably like a stepping stone where they could actually say, well, we can bring him back. Because we already have one version of Vision, which is Wanda's memories and thoughts and personality of vision that she loved and she could probably hex that into the white version of vision that we get within that mid credit scene so that way as they're battling she could just like like kind of like a wish just wish them together to make one but those are my mm. thoughts <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah so well yeah the post credit scene like i said that was my number one and you pretty much Talked about, you know, most of it, how Hayward, you know, he lied. He lied basically about wanting to steal the body. You mentioned that and and whatnot. Now, the drone, the drone with Wanda's power. I was wondering if he did he just luck him luck into that or did he go with the intent launching it with the intent of she was going to stop it and somehow send it back to them (laughs) if you remember the conversation he goes well we needed that sort of power to get it to work now we have that power 
And right. but was that by by chance they had that power, or when he launched the the missile? Think about you know, sending everybody that? into that. They sent Monica in there. She came back out. She came out changed. And mm-hmm. I think Hayworth is aware of it. Yeah. But also her clothes were changed. So now that they got a little bit, her, his intent initially, I think, was to get her out and take care of her for whatever they needed to. Because they literally all they wanted her for was to do something to that particular robot. It was it was mm-hmm. like a lot of sh- like show and tell when it came to getting her pissed off and emotional to leave because they thought mm. they could get her so riled up that she would want him back that they she would hex him there at the compound at sword and it didn't happen now she created this whole wall they have to go in to find out because now westview has been taken over people are hostage so she's responsible they're responsible for her because now she's a weapon and th- this will go into further later on within the MCU when we get to Falcon and Winter Soldier, because due to the Sokovia Accords, and he actually Hayworth actually mentions it, Vision is a weapon that the government owns, kind of like Cap Shield, kind of like Falcon's wings and gear, anything like that, like Iron Man suits. They own those. The government owns all of that. Even Tony states it at uh, I think during Civil War. During when they wouldn't sign and Cap wouldn't sign it. And that was, that's where we're still at. I, I hate going back in time and bringing up old MCU stuff, but that is pretty much on the plate and that's what's going to go forth even still. We're still going to have more of that come back in Ironheart or Iron Wars when those shows come on because Sword and the government is still in charge of all that stuff because. The uh, the Sokovia Accords. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm bringing up a lot of information. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. I knew I knew you would have the White Vision answers, and it's a shame Ben's not here because I I knew he would have more insight. Oh, uh, he'll, insight he'll have well. more. I'm sure, I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was very very excited, ecstatic as well. Yeah. When we saw both the well, we got the Scarlet Witch. Reference and also finally, vision. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first time, first time we ever heard in the right? MCU. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now we will forever know her as the the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, and we do know that her father is not Magneto. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. And those parents that we do see were not in the commercials of the of the show that she created. They were just regular actors, I guess. Oh, okay. So that that was a, a nice, interesting outcome out of it too. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. this was all still in our mind, but there was a, a few, a lot of those commercials still bothers me because, like, the kid with the yogurt. Oh yeah, you know <laughs> what was that about? That, what was that? I'm still <laughs> going. What is this about? It's her picking at whatever and not getting answers and stuff. <laughs> mm, so yeah, that, too much. So that was. Uh, our thoughts into the mid credit and your uh, and our number ones, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yep. But you know, speaking of her powers and everything, the only notes that I would have regarding that it's funny because Agatha talks about the dark power, and that's really literally where she gets those because her, her mother brings it up in the very beginning. You know, they all are able to tap into the dark dimension power, and just like mm-hmm. Dormammu. And and Dormammu was in Doctor Strange, the mm-hmm. orange glow from the 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 dark hold or that book we see in Agatha's basement that obviously Wanda can't get out of because of the hex spell could be equated to uh, an elder god. Oh, it, it could be the god uh, Cthulhu, and chaos ma- magic was literally created from Cthulhu himself. So we've not heard that name. In the MCU, but since uh, we kn- we know it's not Dormammu because Dormammu was told by Strange never to come into that world again, and hopefully he was agreeable, but he never really went against Cthulhu. And if you look at Strange's magic, his his is more elegant geometry style. If you look at the uh, the images and everything, whereas mm-hmm. you know with Agatha, it's more runic. And Cassilius, mm. who is in Doctor Strange, did the same thing because that was part of the dark magic. 
And I okay. think one of those runes are on the uh, on the book that has the orange like magic around it. And we haven't really seen that orange stuff that much. And all we've hmm. seen is purple, red, <laughs> and blue at this point in this series. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm curious. But then again, I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any notes that you want to talk about? Um, well, a couple. Just uh, while well, we kind of touched upon, you know, what's going on with Pietro. Uh, honestly, I missed the po the uh, mid credit scene last week. I was listening to um, you guys with Greg. Mm -hmm. And when you guys mentioned the mid credit scene, I was like, wait a minute. Because that was the first one of the whole season, yes. right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because I was let, ever since the beginning, I know you let the credits play on and nothing was ever coming no. on. So last week, I just didn't, you know, I didn't even think about it. And you guys mentioned that. So because originally, you know, I, I watched this episode and I just thought, oh, Pietro was just someone, somebody from town, you know, that um, Agatha was uh, was controlling. But yeah, I had that yeah, feeling too. That, at one point. After that mid credit scene from last week okay he's still around and he's something you know i don't know if i know you mentioned like he's probably bad and and uh, monica's gonna have to fight him uh, i don't know i don't know if he is or not my hope is that he is the fox version of pietro mm -hmm. and he does work with them that's my deep gut want mm -hmm. but my feeling is from what i'm seeing it's got to be a familiar or whoever agatha was working with and that, those the only other two. Or it could be the missing mm -hmm. person on the milk carton. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. You know. Or or Ralph. It could be or Ralph. Or Ralph. <laughs> Who knows, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, so there was that. We talked about that. Um, oh, the did you – I'm sure you you paused it or at least noticed uh, back in Sokovia when she was little, mm -hmm. the videos in the case – did you take note of of the uh, the videos at all? No, I only saw was uh, the Dick Van Dyke show. She had Bewitched. She had yeah. I paused it to look to see, and it was pretty much throughout the whole series everything we've been saying. Like, oh, that's from that. Except for Family Ties, there wasn't Family Ties. There was Who's the Boss? Mm. It was I Love Lucy, Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, mm -hmm. which I didn't think of you know at all watching this, but that kind of makes sense with the little the little magic. Uh, you know, magic bottle there. <laughs> so who's the boss? Uh, who's the boss? The Adams family, Malcolm Middle, Dick Van Dyke show. So yeah, no family ties though. Um, but yeah, so we kind of figured, you know, why, why she was generating those TV shows was they were shows she watched when she was little, but, uh, they seem to have meant, meant so much more though, after seeing that scene, which we talked about a little bit, but anyway, I just, yeah. I, Wanted to know if you took note of, no, uh, of those VHS tapes, <laughs> but it's it's pretty much everything, you know, almost show for show. But oh, and there was no Brady Bunch, but we saw her watching the Brady Bunch in the memory of uh, yeah, with Hydra's the, cell, the Hydra, and yeah, Hydra cell. That's where we saw the Brady Bunch. So. And uh, we we could also say that Brian Cranston is canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, got that too. Uh, also, uh, the one thing that I liked, and this in one of my notes, is that we actually did get to see Vision and her and how how they became, got involved and were in love. We got mm -hmm. to see that because it kind of was glanced over, brushed over, even in Civil War at that point too. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, just before you know, she talks about uh, Paprikash. Mm -hmm. But it's so funny, yeah. too, how Agatha talks about, oh, that accent goes in and out just like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Something that we all uh, kind of question after the, I think, Infinity War at that point. It's like, what happened to her accent? <laughs> yeah. It just kind of disappeared. <laughs> well, we yeah. know now to some degree she was putting on an act for the most part, if you think about mm -hmm. it. And it was trying her way of trying to fit in. And, you know, and she had a lot of practice because she watched a lot of TV shows, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it, it also comes to what, what I had stated with those TV shows in the very beginning. This was her getaway. This was her idealistic view of American lifestyle. This is what mm -hmm. happiness to her meant to be. And then, you know, now we know. That's the reason why she watched those shows. Yeah. It gave her that memory of her family. Also gave her mm -hmm. the the warm feeling of what she got 
from those shows too and that that's her mm-hmm. idealistic view of american society yeah <laughs> yep yeah i think that was all all of my notes yeah uh i yeah that's all i had <laughs> i really didn't have much <laughs> more after that so but uh we can move on to quotes and i see here that you got a couple yeah i have a couple and you mentioned uh seeing her in vision at the Avengers compound, and that's where both my quotes actually come from. Uh, like I mentioned, I mentioned early on, this this episode didn't have much humor at all, but mm-hmm. the tiniest little bit of humor <laughs> was when Vision was sitting there. You mentioned Brian Cranston; they were watching uh, Malcolm in the Middle, and you know the the scene fell where uh, you know whether the uh, I don't what was he building? It was like a porch, a, house, a porch or something. Yeah. Anyway, all that fell on him and everything, and and he turns to her and says, "It is funny because of the grievous injury the man just suffered." <laughs> um, and she and was I like, "Yeah, that's that was, funny." Yeah. And he goes, "Yeah, I thought yeah, it was funny." Funny because he's <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like, "Why is this?" And she's like, "Oh well, he's not really hurt." <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I got a little that second time through. I got a chuckle out of that first time. I didn't chuckle at all. This then this thing was dark. Then, yeah, but, then you got to realize, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I yeah. I kind of got that too. Yeah, yeah. And then on a more uh, serious note, just like moments later, uh, when he's talking to her about grief mm-hmm. and how he doesn't know it, and he's like, "What is grief if not love persevering?" Uh, which I thought was a real, real special quote there. Yeah, he uh, he he said he doesn't ex- he's never experienced uh, loss. So yeah, exactly. Um, he doesn't know what love is. He- but like you mentioned, that was probably the you could tell there's just that little bit of. Of you know, I want to say magnetism, but you know, there's a little bit of something. <laughs> Don't put something a magnet was near starting him. He's a little a robot. Bit. Yeah, right now. Uh, right. <laughs> but actually, uh, and uh, Infinity War too, a little bit when they were at the compound, yeah, uh, talking too. You saw, you'd, you'd see a little bit of that, but uh, they do, they did glaze over it quite a bit. So it's nice to see that we're. We're getting a little bit of the relationship, but I don't know if it's going to be over after next week. I don't know. Well, the, the, don't know. everybody <laughs> keeps rumoring about this mysterious tenth episode, but uh, who knows what will happen? We'll find out. Then yeah, it'd be nice if they were just a little longer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? I think we all. It's like God, we want more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. Well, that was pretty much our coverage for. Uh, the episode itself, but we got a little bit. We got some feedback. So we got some feedback from Facebook from. Mike Trapina Jr. and he states the new WandaVision episode with Agatha taking Wanda into her past and watching her parents, brother, and Vision die was awesome. Huh? Well, glad he enjoyed it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it was it was good. I enjoyed it too on a on a level. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was certainly. Uh, well, you you had to take it for what it was. Like I said, it was kind of like, okay, how do we get here? Where are we going? And uh, it was dark. <laughs> exactly. Well. There isn't any news that I could look up this week for anything comic book or uh, movie related from adaptations to comics. So we'll just move into uh, our podcast recommendation. So, Damien, do you have one? Oh, I do. I do. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, I'm a baseball fan. And it's, cool. uh, it's you know, springtime is around the corner, although we did get a little little blast a couple times last week, and it's kind of raw today, oh, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, um, um, but uh, you know, the ESPN Baseball Tonight podcast has just gone to uh, daily podcasts because uh, spring training started last week, so I've been listening, listening to that. It's kind of nice uh, hearing how things are in Florida and, and just kind of getting ready for this winter to to get on out of here and for spring to come but yeah i'm a big baseball fan so i uh i listen to that pretty much and then um entertainment wise you know you you plug these quite a bit uh field to screen with our friend alex yep. and run for your lives with daphne and Pake. Uh, i really enjoy listening to uh to those as well they do some good coverage alex with the the sports movies and uh daphne and Pake. Uh, with the monster slash disaster films. Uh, good times. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Enjoy listening to them. Yeah, definitely. Well, with me, well, since Mr. Ben Beck himself is not here this week, I'll plug some of his. Lost, we have to go back, and you could find that on the Next Level Network. He is continuing his coverage of Lost. I'm not sure exactly where they are. He said they were going into, I think, season seven, but it's amazing how, how much you could cover. And I, I think that was the most he said. He said it last week the, that they covered about one, one particular show regarding that. Also his Wilhelm screen when it comes out. So that's a new podcast and that's going to be, uh, hopefully launching. I, I'm hoping within the next week or two. 
probably after we finish uh, WandaVision, he'll probably launch his first episode. So that'll be great. So check that out. Just go to the Next Level Network. Check out Wilhelm Screen. It could be found on Twitter also, as well as Instagram and Facebook. So just sign up for those to get more information when it does actually come out and show up. We will keep you all notified when that does happen. So you could go out and listen to Ben there. As well as Lost We Have to Go Back, Lost Revisited. So check that out on the Next Level Network. And for all of you people that want to submit any feedback, you just have to go to our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. With that, you could just check it out. The page will have an episode image for what we're covering this week. So this coming week, I'll put an image of WandaVision. I believe there's an image that's coming out soon for Snowpiercer, where Steve could be found with Daphne as their coverage continues on Snowpiercer. And then... I will eventually end up on that when WandaVision ends, so I'll give my ideas and thoughts, or maybe I'll just let them continue doing it amongst themselves and just send in some audio feedback, which would be great. But you could just go to the Facebook page, go to Panels to Pixels, and then you could just check out the image that's there for the particular podcast image for WandaVision or Snowpiercer. Just put your comments below that, and it'll be read. If you want to, you could always feel free to send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels and two is spelled out to you pixels one, the number one at gmail.com. All you have to do is just send us a regular email or you could do what Steve likes to do on other podcasts is just record your voice, send that voice recording as an attachment and I'll play it um, and we'll play it as well too. So send that to here. And you could hear us on uh, Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts right now. So if you have a friend, word of mouth always gets people to listen to us. So it's great if you could just spread the word about Panels to Pixels podcast. We could also be found on YouTube. So you could just search for us on YouTube under Panels to Pixels podcast while you're there. If you like the episode that you're listening to and it's on YouTube, just give us a thumbs up. And if you really like the content and that's how you are listening, just subscribe and you'll be notified when the new episode has come up. You always get that little ringy dingy bell that comes up when a new episode comes up on YouTube. So it's awesome. So next week we'll be, we will be covering or continuing our coverage with WandaVision. Unfortunately, it's episode nine, which is supposedly the last episode so episode nine season one of wandavision so ben will be back uh, if you have any uh feedback to leave regarding or if you just miss ben that much just send them in, in the feedback page and we'll read them out loud i'm sure he'll love it if you guys said something it'd be great so where else can listeners hear us damien do you have anything to offer have you been on another podcast before or I was actually on an episode of Field to Screen, uh Alex's podcast which I mentioned. Uh we did Moneyball cool. uh, early on. It might have been his mm, second or third episode, I think. So yeah, that was my first guesting spot. So other than that, I'm just starting to to make my uh rounds on the guest circuit and I am I actually have my own podcast in the works. It's a 80s movies a podcast and getting some television as well. It's called Watched It in the 80s podcast. Hmm. I do have some social media set up, but it's not quite live yet, so I'm not going to share it this time. Okay. Uh, or email for that matter. But, you know, we're, we're in the uh, the early, early, early to mid stages of setup, but hopefully we'll be launching here in the, in the next uh, couple weeks or month or so. Awesome. Um, yep. Cool. So check out Damien. He was on Field to Screen with Alex. So check out that episode <laughs> and we'll keep you guys updated on his podcast when it's available. So with that, you could find me right here on Panels to Pixels on the Next Level Network doing what I do every week, as well as sending feedback when I can to my friends who do podcasts themselves, just like Run for Your Lives or Strange Indeed or Podcastica. I love doing that at times. It just it, It's fun just to send it out and get my voice out there just to hear what they thought of my thoughts on the episodes that they cover. You could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And with that particular podcast, we cover all action, suspense, thriller, 
and adventure film. So I just released literally before Damien and I got on to record. Ben and I had covered The Rock from 1996 with Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. So you could go there and listen to that now if you like. And you could hear both Ben and I give our <laughs> odd versions of Sean Connery's accent <laughs> as we <laughs> quote him. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to do. Not bad. So, but check me out there, and you can always just subscribe to that. That has a uh, Facebook page as well, and that's Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that's on Facebook as well. And we will keep you up to date just as much as we do here, there on what's going on panels to pixels. So catch me on both. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Damien. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night.